Gestational diabetes. Now, this is a big whopper of a topic, and I can't believe it's taking me so long to finally get to it. So firstly, let's start off with a definition. Gestational diabetes refers to glucose intolerance, which is first recognized during pregnancy. This usually resolves postpartum, but in some cases can persist or be associated with increased risk of type 2 diabetes. So before we can understand what's going on in gestational diabetes, let's recap a bit on normal glucose metabolism. So as we know, glucose is obtained from the food we eat, which ends up in our GI tract, and then enters the bloodstream. This rise in blood sugar stimulates the pancreatic beta cells to produce insulin. Insulin is a hormone which helps to move glucose from the blood into the cells via the GLUT4 transporter over here, therefore lowering blood sugar levels. In diabetes, insulin is either deficient or not used effectively. In this case, glucose remains in the bloodstream, resulting in persistent high blood sugar levels. Now let's have a look at what happens during a normal pregnancy. During pregnancy, we've got the placenta, connecting the mother and fetus. The placenta produces a number of hormones, which help to maintain the pregnancy. These impair the action of insulin, making it less effective. Let's break it down. So during the first trimester, we predominantly have estrogen and progesterone being produced. These actually promote insulin sensitivity, which results in increased maternal energy stores for later pregnancy and can actually result in a mild hypoglycemia. Then, in the second and third trimesters, the placenta produces HPL, human placental lactogen, progesterone, estrogen, cortisol, and the placental variant of growth hormone. HPL is the most predominant hormone affecting glucose metabolism. These hormones cause the mother's cells to become less sensitive to insulin, what we refer to as a physiological insulin resistance. Therefore, this leaves more glucose within the maternal bloodstream, increasing the availability of glucose to the fetus. This is why pregnancy is referred to as a diabetogenic state. So to get a bit of a clearer understanding, let's rephrase things slightly. So the placental hormones have an antagonistic effect on insulin. So this means that the hormones prevent some of the insulin from working properly. Therefore, not all of the glucose is taken up by the cells. Now, this is usually compensated for by the mother's pancreas which works to make more insulin. This happens by increasing the number of beta cells within the pancreas, usually increasing the production of insulin by two to three times the normal amount, therefore preventing hyperglycemia to occur in the mother and preventing excessive glucose getting to the baby. So this is what happens in a normal pregnancy. Now, what's going on in gestational diabetes? So, essentially, this natural adaptation fails. We do not have extra insulin being produced as a compensatory mechanism, which results in hyperglycemia in these women. This is essentially happening because of pre-existing beta cell dysfunction. So, this means that to start off with, the placenta is weaker and not producing enough insulin. This could be secondary to genetics, obesity, or PCOS, for example. Another contributory factor to the hyperglycemia is an exaggerated insulin resistance, requiring even more insulin to be produced. This can happen in, for example, obesity or with inflammatory conditions. So I hope that the physiology behind why gestational diabetes happens is more clear. Stay tuned to my next videos all about GDM. Like and subscribe.